You like my 70 groove, baby? Right. (laughs) How are you today? I am well. How are you, my friend? Good. Same. Super excited. We are working on the audiobook for volume one, right? Working on sending volume two of Women Connected and Wisdom to the typesetter. And I can't, I don't think I could be more excited about people hearing the new stories, people hearing the first volume for the first time because they didn't have time to read the book, you know? So yeah, excited about more stories getting out. That's where I'm at. Right. I was having a conversation with somebody last week about um, living in our purpose, right? About how when things get tough, because this summer for a lot of people has been tough. We've talked about it on the podcast. We've talked about it with guests. um, And, you know, it doesn't feel like things have eased up this year. Mm -hmm. It feels like things have gotten more intense. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about like all our deadlines and all our, and what are we on today? Are we 124? 124. So, um, you know, all the work that happens behind the scenes and it just hits different. Oh, I want to change that language. That's Mm -hmm. kind of some violent language. Um, It, it lands different when we're in purpose, Mm -hmm. right? It lands different when we're uplifting voices. Like, you know, you and I always tend to go back to like, what's our, what's our values? What's our mission with this podcast, with the book, with the community? and that uplifting of women's voices and um and supporting each other and having resources for each other right like yes. all of that um yeah it just lands differently yeah so. and we're today we're talking about social wellness right and it reminds me of our conversation we were having at the shalo glow um event this past weekend about asking for help and mm. when i think about women connected in wisdom and our stories you know it's the asking for help and actually getting action steps and feedback and positive Mm -hmm. feedback. Like, Hey, one, Mm -hmm. you're doing a great job, (laughs) right? Two, I know somebody who can help you. Like that feels amazing when you feel like you've been under all this pressure or whatever is going on in Mm -hmm. life and you just need to be led to the right place. So yes, I hear you on the in purpose. I love what we do. Right. So should we do our official introduction and kick off and get episode 124 rocking and rolling? Yeah, let's do it. Let's Hi, do ladies. It. I am Shannon Mitchell, a Black millennial entrepreneur and Amazon bestselling author, the founder of Shalo Glow, an all-natural handmade personal products company that helps women with dry skin glow from head to toe. I'm a champion for your self-care, business care, and intentional wellness. Hey, y'all, I'm Christine Gotro, a white social justice advocate, an international speaker, coach, Amazon bestselling author with a lot of other amazing women (laughs) and dancing social worker who helps you upgrade yourself and community care. Yes. Together, we are a podcast rooted in the eight dimensions of wellness and the co-founders of Women Connected and Wisdom Community. And we like to get together every week with expert guests for intentional conversations about how to be wise in business and life. And how do we do this? How do we do it? Yes. Especially (laughs) talking about social wellness, right? Because Mm -hmm. the feedback we got from the first cohort of authors was had such a good time. Right. Melody said last week she had so much fun doing the book with us, thinking about Coach Co and how she said this group of women worked so well together and how, again, socially, it's not like that. It's usually competition or pettiness. And here we are intentional on the collaboration, you know, intentional on the connectedness and just operating from a healthy place and an authentic place. So that's what's been top of mind for me when I think about social wellness. What about for you? Mm. Well, what's been top of mind is, as you know, and our listeners knows, I've been doing a lot of caregiving recently. And, you know, at first I think, well, that doesn't really go under social wellness, but it really does when you think about connections and when, because at first I'm thinking, well, my social wellness is a little out of balance because I haven't gotten, when I think social wellness, I think play. And I know it's more than that. Right. Mm -hmm. And when we read the definition in a minute for our listeners, but when I really think about social to me, 
because you know I'm an extrovert and I love to connect with people and I love interacting. And so I think play. Mm -hmm. And so I think, oh, I haven't gotten to play much as far as with my friends and just some downtime and things like that. So I think, oh, I'm a little out of balance on that. But but it's different in every season, right? right. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm going to read the definition because I, I want to... I want to talk about it a little more after I read the definition. Let's do it. So y'all today we're talking about social wellness and social wellness is the ability to nurture ourselves, others, and our relationships with healthy boundaries. It includes, and we always put this in quotes, balancing the other seven dimensions of wellness and actively participating as an interdependent being in the web of life. And for me, what sticks out this week is the ability to nurture ourselves. I was telling the ladies this past week and I saw this video on Instagram, right? And it was talking about saying, I love you in the mirror. I said, oh, do I do that? We talk about the Goldie saying, yes, it's going to be a great day, right? All those things intentionally. But did you tell Shannon, when's the last time you told Shannon, like, I love you? Like, really? Mm-hmm. Like you tell other people, you know? And so I was in the mirror doing some self-care. I told them, I'll tell the listeners, I was, I was tweezing my, my, uh, chin okay and I'm in the mirror and I hit the eye I hit my eye in the mirror I said so you're gonna tell yourself that you love yourself and I kind of hesitated and on this Instagram post she was saying how difficult it was for people so I I said is it difficult for you to tell yourself you love you you know that I love you so I did it and I've started doing it and for me that's huge on how I balance my social wellness, right? Mm -hmm. It has to be me making sure I'm okay first. Did I pour into me? Because I am known with myself to Mm overpour, right? To give to other people what was supposed to be mine and to give my power away in that way. So me making sure I tell myself I love myself before I tell my partner, before I tell my dad in the morning, we do a great job at texting in the morning, right? Um, But to have that for myself before I pour out has been big. Especially you talked about being an um, an extrovert. I'm actually mm-hmm. right in the middle, you know, so yeah. love being an extrovert, love, you know, that recharges my battery to be socially mm-hmm. around people and per- participating. And sometimes it needs to be me by myself and not talking to the hundreds of thousands of people that I'm used to working with. Right. Um, and that and recharging and refilling from that self-care. I would agree. I'm an ambivert too. I yes. lean more towards an ambivert than an extrovert, but okay. you know, I love people do refuel me. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Cause a do. lot of times in the true definition of an introvert, people drain you. Mm-hmm. And, um, and there are times people can drain me. And that's yes, also one of my clues to know that, Oh, I'm low on the self-care bucket. Right. Or maybe it's that person. Um, well, it so, could be. Cause yeah. I do think there's some energy vampires out there that, you know, when you know, we always talk about an interplay and when I'm coaching folks about noticing our body wisdom, right? And if you notice, like when you're around people, do they drain you or do they feed you? And sometimes it can be where you are. And sometimes you're right. It can be that person that if every time you're with them, you leave depleted, Mm then that's probably a check-in around your Mm -hmm. social wellness is, um, is how that, how's that going with them? Right. So I love that. the balance of it in the season, I think you're, mm-hmm. you're spot on. And that's what I had to realize. Social situations helped me realize that, that I was too black and white, right? Mm-hmm. If this was the rule, then that's how I always um, operated. But there is difference depending on the context of the situation. And I think that's important to keep right. front of mind. Well, today with our expert guests, we're going to talk about social wellness in regards to the workplace. Awesome which I'm really excited about because, you know, you think about social wellness and like, you know, I immediately said it's about having fun with my friends, you know, but I'm an entrepreneur and uh, like I do have work friends, Mm -hmm. but they're my friends. Like, you know, and so, and then this whole thing about, you know, how some people really all their friends are their work friends because that's what they do. Right. Mm -hmm. They don't, have time outside of work. So I'm interested about the weaving of that, about social wellness and work and when we're in transitions mm-hmm. in our lives, in our careers and things like that. That's huge. So, yeah. Let's talk about it. Are you ready to introduce our guests? Let's do it. Yes. Yeah, right. So this week we are talking to Camlin Pham and Cam Pham is a talent developer, educator, and creative junkie from Southern California. She's on a personal and professional journey to help you with yours. 
Today, she has helped thousands of early career talent navigate their careers, land internships, career opportunities, and develop their identity and brand. Her goal is to help level the playing field for all talent to succeed, regardless of their social capital or background, and inspire the next generation of professionals to design the career and life harmony of their dreams. Welcome to the mm. stage, Cam Fam. Hi, y'all. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. We are so delighted to have this conversation with you. Yes. <laughs> yes. I was, and so we're going to talk a little bit about LinkedIn, right? But when I first saw your profile on LinkedIn and your story of how you decided to switch your name back to Cam Lim Fam, I was like, absolutely. We have to have her on the podcast and share that important journey because I have a lot of friends from around the world and that's always a topic of discussion, you know? So welcome to our social wellness episode. Yeah, I'm so excited to be here and um, very grateful for the opportunity and platform to be able to share my story and hopefully inspire at least one other person to embrace their authentic selves. Yes. Uh, so I was um, uh, I was an immigrant. I was born um, in Vietnam and I came uh, a little bit after my fifth birthday and landed in Anaheim, uh, California. And so... Uh, part of my uh, journey in my early journey in the United States, it was really difficult. Um, as you can imagine for immigrants, you know, I didn't speak English. I came right after fifth, my fifth birthday. And so I started school not knowing English. <laughs> and as you might um, know what it feels like, when you're traveling to a different country and you kind of feel that culture shock, like you don't really know the language, you don't recognize these landmarks or buildings or, you know, these people look different from you. I experienced that being here in the States, but on a much bigger scale because this was my new home now. And so there was a part of me that felt really overwhelmed. And at the same time, um, worried about, you know, navigating this new space. And of course I was really young, but now looking back, I think that there were some uh, moments in my early uh, pivotal years where I didn't feel included. I didn't feel like I belong. I didn't feel like I could connect with others because my English was so bad. Um, and so, yeah, that's how, you know, that's sort of what has brought me to to be here today and talking with you all about helping others embracing themselves and being able to find the beauty and all the things that make them different. Absolutely. Yes. Differences are celebrated. And that was one of my things growing up, having the opportunity to study with students from around the world. I would get so upset when I would look at people with great character and because they pronounce a word differently than you, you're going to make their day worse. Just didn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm super excited to, again, to share your story. And I would love to go deeper on why you decided to have an English name, right? And how that helped mm -hmm. you. Because it's not about shame. If this is what is works better for you to navigate the context of the situation that you're in, like you're talking about all these details, if you need to use this name, then okay. You know, and what brought you to using that name and how did it help? Yeah, so I grew up being bullied. I had, you know, Cam Lynn as a name. And nowadays we're pretty open to culture and immigrants and people with ethnic names. But I feel like we have worked a lot to get to where we are today. And so back then kids were, I mean, kids are probably still ruthless now, but <laughs> even more ruthless because I, I truly feel like social media opened up this opened up people's minds and ideas about culture and name and celebration of differences. But unfortunately, you know, I grew up without social media. And so my name was very odd to a lot of my classmates. They didn't recognize it. They couldn't pronounce it. It looked different. And even with my teachers too, the first day of school, oh my gosh, I would dread it so much reading on the roll call and butchering my name. And so it was really tough. And then every time the teacher would be out and there would be a substitute teacher, here we go again. <laughs> and so it was really difficult just um, even 
before somebody meets me, they see my name and they already have a perception of me. And so with my peers, um, you know, it was really difficult being feeling like I was a part of the circle a lot of the times because my English was broken or maybe there were some cultural differences that I just didn't get. I didn't understand. And I still joke about it today. Um, sometimes people joke about like 80s music or 80s, 90s pop culture, and I don't understand. <laughs> I'm right there um, with you. <laughs> I was watching um, This Is Pop yesterday on Netflix, and I have to like catch up because I say I was at work. I was out cutting somebody's yard. I was not in everything. I'm with yeah. you. Yeah. So I didn't understand a lot of the cultural nuances of what it meant to be American. Um, yes. and, and so then... You know, just being, just feeling like an, like an alien, even though at that um, point I had been living in the United States for a few years now, um, for most of my life then at that point. Um, but the kids, they would make nicknames out of it. They would just make me hate my name. And every time I heard it, it did not bring a positive feeling. Yeah, exactly. Joy. It, right. I, I felt ashamed of that name. I felt like it made me explicitly stand out as a non-American. I am um, Yeah, and so when my family um, became, became citizens in uh, fifth grade, I believe it was the summer after my fifth grade, and we had the chance to change our names, you bet I hopped on that. I took that opportunity. Right. I thought it was my moment to finally be free. And we can reflect a little bit more on that, on what free meant. But um, I, I thought it was my, my opportunity to finally get rid of this identity, erase it. Nobody's going to remember that I was ever Camlin. And then I was going to be able to be a new person, an American, and now Katie. So that's sort of the name that I changed it to. Mm. First of all, can we just pause and take a deep breath, Cam, for that sweet little five-year-old who just, mm, my nibblings turn four next week. These are my, my, the loves of my life, right? And I just think about their age and I think about your age and I think about that journey and whoo. So I just want to send her some love mm -hmm. and that she survived and thrived <laughs> and yeah. is here talking with us today because that's a big deal. Yeah, that's a really big deal. I thought about that, too. Yeah. After I made that post on LinkedIn where I was reintroducing myself and Shannon, that's the post that you saw. Yes. I thought to myself, gosh, I want to hug baby Cam so bad. I want to travel back in time and just give her a tight hug and just say, guess what? One day you're going to come back to this and you're going to feel so empowered by your name and proud of your name and you're going to love it. And you're going to think it's beautiful. And I think that, um, yeah, when I think about that, it just evokes so such deep emotions for me. Yeah. So can we talk about that? So Cam went to Kim and then when did Kim Go back to Cam. What was that? It was Katie. Katie. Katie excuse Katie. me. Katie. Thank you yeah, for correcting okay. me, Christine. No worries. Katie. No worries. Yeah. So Cam <laughs> went to Katie, and then Katie went to Cam. What was it like for you to make that official decision? I love the name Kim. It's it's my closest and bestest cousin's name. So I love that you thought I was Kim. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to cousin Kim. <laughs> um, I, yeah, it was. So you're talking about the, the moment when I sort of transitioned to Katie, Bad, yes. right? Okay. Well, if you want to share there, yeah. I was asking about when you decided to come back mm. to Cam. Yeah. Yeah. Which one, whichever you want to share more, this is your story. Yeah. Um, I, so I can start earlier at the beginning. So when I transitioned from Camlin to Katie, it, I felt like, I felt like I was like a phony, you know, I was like, oh my God, I hope my friends didn't, don't remember that I was Camlin last summer. <laughs> I 
I hope that they forgot that a couple months ago I went by Camlin. Um, but it was almost like I didn't talk to them about it at all. We went away for summer. We came back to school. And then my sixth grade teacher um, read off roll call, calling me Katie. And all my friends were like, what? Like, who's Katie here? And so I didn't talk to any of them at all. And I think I was just so ashamed of that transition that I didn't want people to know, which no, which is so silly because obviously I'm changing my name, but I think I was so ashamed of that that I didn't want to talk about it. I just hope that they would just call me Katie here on forward and don't ask any questions. Um, and so that transition for my friends was um a little difficult because they've been so used to calling me Camlin, and then next thing you know, they're calling me Katie. And some folks even made fun of me for it. You know, some folks were like, "Oh, you you changed your name. Like you don't like like your Vietnamese name anymore. You're like trying to be American now." So there's some kids were really mean about it. Um, but as soon as I went into middle school and high school and then college, it has sort of been erased. And at that point, only. Um, a select small number of friends who had known me from elementary school still recalled that I was Camlin, but I understand. by the time that I was, yeah, hit going through all of those stages, um, Camlin had been pretty much buried um, and, you know, didn't really exist anymore. Uh, however, one person who did keep it alive was Kim. <laughs> And so that's why I said I, I love the name Kim. Wow. Um, just because I love her so much. But yeah. she continued to call me Camlin. Um, of course, in front of family only. In, in front of friends, she would call me Katie. Um, but she has kept it alive. And she just is such a loving person. And I think that that shaped the way that I viewed my name. Because every time she would say my name, it was just so supportive out of love, you know, like positive energy. And so she helped me rewire the way that I viewed my name. And so um, she was one of the only people that called me Camlin. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And let's take a second, you know, because we talk about community, community mirroring your greatness back to you. Right. And again, shout out to Cousin Kim. Like, that's huge. That's so important. You know, thinking about people who have similar stories is, is your story. If they didn't didn't have that, you know what I mean? Like what happens to that person? So yeah. that's amazing. And I'm glad that you had somebody to be able to pour love back into the name after everything that you had went through with it. Yeah. And I think that's just one of those examples where kindness and love can do so much to you know a person like even when you don't think that it's a big deal or maybe you don't realize the impact of that moment everything that you do all of the ways that you treat another person can really um alter the course of their life i mean not to be dramatic but let's be I dramatic <laughs> Let's be super right? dramatic. We're allowed because, to be dramatic, absolutely. Because uh, people are not here anymore. You know what I mean? Like big things happen when you treat people like this and it's mm -hmm. not to be taken lightly. And like you said, online and social media, a lot of these things um, can exponentiate them when the tools are used in hurtful ways, you know? So I think we make it big for the people who have been hugely impacted by the way that they've been treated. Yes, I love that. I think this, um, if y'all are okay, if I shift just a little bit, what's bubbling up for me is I think about this and I think about yes. your story and I think about your name. And when we talk about social wellness with work and how important names really are and the culture of work and making sure that we treat our colleagues with kindness and compassion and we get their names right yes. and we don't shorten their names or we don't nickname them or no. we don't, you know, say that we have a hard time pronouncing their name, that we just practice it and try Let's it. And it. right. And I do think Cam, what you said that, you know, social media has helped us. And then I also think that there's still a lot of ignorance out there mm -hmm. and 
people, especially white people, like think that, oh, they don't have to learn new names or they don't. And it's like, come on, y'all. Like, our names are important. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. So I would love to hear, I guess, Christine, my question is where specifically should we take that? For me, that comment takes me a lot of different places, right? Right. How should we make it more specific? Well, I'm just thinking with Cam's expertise as yes. far as helping helping people in the workforce as a mm-hmm. career coach, as a, I mean, Cam, you can take it where you want to go because, you know, we titled this show How to Be a Gold Digger because, first of all, I love that. And yes. you told me so much on your LinkedIn that it says that. <laughs> and we're always talking about goals. And it yeah, just are. made me giggle and light up. Um, mm-hmm. So we can talk about, like, you know, social wellness in the workplace. Like, what do you see as a career coach? Like, mm-hmm. what are, you know, I guess here's the way. Here's the way I want to ask it. Yeah. What are things that folks can do to be resilient yeah. in the workforce, especially if they're struggling with things like this, that if um, if they've got colleagues that are disrespectful or, you know, and their option is not to just leave. Right. Um, or what are the steps? Boy, these are a lot of questions, but it's all bubbling up because I was also thinking, what are the steps like hiring somebody like you as a career coach to help them get out of a bad situation to get into a better one. Like, I think we could take it all kinds of places. Great questions. Yeah. And I, I still have your question in mind, Shannon, about transitioning from Katie to Cam. And no problem. I'm going to try to touch on all of these points, as well as the ones that Christine just shared, because I think that's super important practicing resiliency, not only in your personal life, but in your professional life as well. Yes. Um, so, so I work with a lot of folks who have, um, who have ethnic names. I work with a lot of folks who are international. Um, and one of the um, a very common research that was conducted was that uh, resumes with, with American sounding names were more likely to be selected for an interview or a job versus resumes with ethnic names. And I believe the research also exists to share that resumes with um, African-American names were um, less likely to be selected than resumes with white names. Right. And so we know that this exists. And so let's, you know, put it in the spotlight that this is not anything that we are hiding. And so a lot of the folks I work with struggle with this because they know people are... I think we lost her for a second. Okay, let's see. We'll give her a second. Maybe yeah. having a tech issue. Oh, let's take a deep breath while we wait on her. <sighs> Ooh, this is such, it's the juicy part too, oh, y'all. It's the juicy part. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is good. Right? Let's see. Right, let's see if she about- comes back on. And to answer your question, what I would do, Christine, if let, what I would advise if I was a manager and somebody on my team came to me about this person is saying something about my name and they don't know what to say, right? Mm-hmm. For me, is like anything else, any other um, difficulty that you might have to communicate through with somebody, right? Like, hey, I heard you call me Shannon. I prefer to be called Shannon. You know, mm-hmm. it happens What if you want to include understanding or if you just want to be mm-hmm. straight to it, this is what I prefer to be called. I think as long as you come to people with, um, you know, professionalism and the openness to have a conversation and meet them, then that gives them the opportunity to see how they're going to respond. If somebody responds in an unhealthy way or a hurtful way, that's when I would send an email and commu- continue communicating up the chain if I had to. Or if you don't want to do that, maybe document it if it's really important to you and you feel like it's really hurtful. Um, Mm -hmm. But just like anything else, when you're teaching people how to treat you, it's that open communication and um, reiterating sometimes what you want. Right. Yeah. I agree with you. So, you know, I didn't have any issues with this until I got married Mm -hmm. and I took my husband's name. And, um, you know, I had a very 
American name, um, an easy name until, right. until I got married. <laughs> right. And then, you know, now I got a nine letter name and, um, but I always have the humor of it because it's, my last name is Gotro mm -hmm. and it's spelled G-A-U-T-R-E-A-U-X. Yes. So if you're from Louisiana, you know how to pronounce it. If you're from Texas, you might know how to pronounce it. Right. right. So when I moved to Georgia, it cracked me up because I could always tell when a salesperson was on the call. And sometimes they would butcher the name so bad, I could honestly say, oh, I'm sorry, that person doesn't live here. So <laughs> yeah. here she comes. Hey, Camlin. Oh, I'm so sorry. I don't know what it's happened. Okay. It's okay. You know, tech happens. Um, yeah. And we were... We were saying that you were at a juicy part too, yes, so you were. no worries. <laughs> we can jump right back in, no problem. Hey, y'all, this is a great place to take a break, take a deep breath, and hear from our awesome sponsors that make Women Connected and Wisdom podcast possible. Shannon, we are so grateful that Shayla Glow is the sponsor of the Women Connected in Wisdom podcast. And I wanted to take this moment to ask you, when you think about the people who use Shayla Glow, who are we talking about? Mm, that's a good question. I think about three groups, really. One, the group that's removing hair, right? So whether you're using laser hair removal, waxing, shaving, you got to make sure that you're putting back what you're taking out. The second group, I think about those with dry skin and the problems that that might cause, right? The scars, itching, burning, whatever the situation is, you definitely need all three steps, right? The exfoliation, making sure you're taking the dead skin cells off, the oil, putting in the, the moisture and then the shea butter with the aloe, sealing it, helping you heal, those things help both groups, right? And third, for the third group is those with chronic illness. You know, the story is personally from cancer and different diseases that our population is dealing with on a daily basis throughout families as individuals. So I'm thinking about my mom and my grandmother and those around me with the same generational ties, right? And what positive healthy habits we can start to make sure that we're maintaining our wellness, especially because the skin is like the cape, the exterior, the the shield for your immune system. So with COVID, we have to be intentional about covering ourselves. And those are the groups I think about. I love it. And you know what else I love about your product? It's all natural, handmade, yes. and it smells great, y'all. So yes, esthetician yay. tested. <laughs> yes, <laughs> esthetician <laughs> tested and approved. Yes. Yes. What about you? When you think about your company, what groups of people do you think about? Well, you know, I work with individual coaching clients. I work in community classes and with corporate teams. And with all of them, I use a strength-based embodied approach to help folks connect with themselves and access joy, reduce burnout, and build resilience. You know, especially during these times, I think we need it. I think we need all the hashtag partnership power we can get. Yes. And so because of that, a lot of folks want to change their names to an American name so they don't get stigmatized for, you know, for who they are. Um, and so I have so many of these conversations with folks. And of course, not every conversation is me trying to change their mind because at that point I'd still been Katie. Um, but it's a lot of conversations revolving around identity and embracing our names or, or not and wanting to feel accepted and wanting to be seen. Um, and so having these conversations, I don't believe at the moment made me immediately think about, oh my gosh, I changed my name. <laughs> I went through this process that they are trying to go through mm -hmm. and I feel the same way, but having so, so many of these conversations, I think that it just, stayed in the back of my mind. And I don't think that it immediately made me want to change my name, but I think that over time I started thinking about it more. And I was, as I was helping people through their transitions from, you know, education to entering the workforce, yes. a lot of these conversations revolved around those um, finding yourself, embracing who you are, bringing your authentic selves to the workplace. And then, so in my act of counseling others, 
you know, they counseled me in return. And I realized maybe it's the right time. It's a good time for me to come back to Camlin. And I think that I can help a lot more people by being Camlin because that's truly who I am. <laughs> I hear you. Mm, I love that. Yeah. And I know that earlier you were asking, you know, how can folks be resilient in the workplace? Mm -hmm. And I think it all starts with being your authentic selves, right? If you are being who you are, if you're bringing your true selves, then you don't necessarily feel like you have to hide anything or feeling like you have to work harder to be accepted. And I think that in that act, you are being resilient, right? You're being, um, you're so strong that you're, you're holding out against these perceptions of who you should be. What means, what does it mean to be a professional person or, you know, the way that you should speak or all of those things. And so I think that um, one of the best tips for being resilient in the workplace is just bring your authentic selves to your work um, in the office or at home if you're working remotely. <laughs> Right. And what I had shared is that let's say there is a situation, right, where my name is Shannon and somebody's saying Shannon or saying it differently. I would just have the conversation. If it bothered me and I felt like I needed to bring it to that person professionally, you know, and say, hey, you said Shannon, but I prefer to be called Shannon. I would like it if that's how I was addressed from here on out, like however you feel like it makes sense for you to say it. You want to throw some understanding on there. I get it might be difficult, but this is how you pronounce it. Okay. If not, okay. You know? Um, and then I said, if, if you felt like it wasn't met appropriately and there was a hurtful conversation from that, then maybe to send a follow-up email and send it up. Or if you don't want to send it up the chain of communication in the organization that you're in, maybe just document it so that you for yourself have stuff written down. I think that sometimes when I write stuff down, it gets it out of my head. And that in situations professionally where I've had a list of conversations with people and then later on it was like, well, not really. Somebody might've tried to sweep stuff under the rug. I wish I would've had that log of, no, this absolutely <laughs> was has been going on for a while. You know, What do you think about that advice with your experience? Yeah, I mean, I think it's always great to keep written documentation of things because you never know if it, I mean, hopefully it doesn't escalate, but if it does, you have, um, you know, some written documentation that you have been treated this way. You've been harassed or maybe, um, you know, put be put in uncomfortable situations, maybe even unsafe situations. Mm -hmm. And so I think it is important for that. Um, but I would like to to think that people are are good. I mean, yeah. we're all inherently good, and that people want to learn. And so, I um, I have had people butcher my name, but I know that maybe they've never met anybody named Camlin, or right. maybe they've never heard of that name. And so, right. it's almost like learning a word for the first time. Maybe you pronounce it a little weird the first time. Yeah. Um, but after some practice, you get better at it. And granted, Shannon is a pretty common name. So. <laughs> it is, right? Shannon Beverly Mitchell is really easy for people to say. And it does, it is different. I would We wouldn't even call it an African-American name, you know. <laughs> With the GPA and the credentials, they're like, they call Shannon. They're not expecting it to be me in the room, <laughs> you know. So I hear what you're saying. Yeah. And so, but who knows, you know, like maybe this individual met a Shannon and... Right. Shannon said, oh, my name is Shannon, not Shannon. Right, exactly, <laughs> so, exactly. Who knows? Um, but I think just giving people compassion and yeah. just grace. And, and, and if you continuously give that to them and they still return with negativity or unwillingness mm -hmm. to learn how to pronounce your name right, then, you know, that's snip, it. snip. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> they don't need to be yeah. a part of your school. And so right. that's, that's it. And what I know is that a lot of people feel guilty for being bad at names, right? Even if they pronounce it correctly, they're like, I'm not going to remember. I'm horrible at names. That's most people who I meet and we have conversations about names, right? So maybe it's some of that. Maybe it is the pronunciation and the embarrassment of getting somebody's name wrong. It's this false facade of confidence. You're just going to change it to something else. But I hear what you're saying. And yeah. I can tell you that in situations where 
I feel like somebody might look at me professionally a certain way and undervalue or underestimate what I can bring to the table. It is exactly what you're saying. You know, okay, this is what you think. And I see the situation. This is how I operate, though, when I'm in a role. And then that speaks Mm -hmm. for itself. You know, whether it's shift reviews or um, as managers, we had things where the staff would give feedback, you know, the highest level of professionalism in the restaurant can't be disputed. It doesn't matter what the name is. That speaks for itself. You know, and that's something that you can go on and talk about at interviews and bring to other teams and use as transferable skills. So I love the work that you do with the young professionals. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like if you just are not sure how to pronounce somebody's name, just ask them. You know, yes, like exactly. every time I like me um, meet somebody new or I'm coaching somebody new and, and I don't I know how to pronounce their name. I don't even try. I just ask them, mm-hmm. can you teach me how to say your name? Beautiful. Um, mm-hmm. And just a question like that, I feel like it's, that's, that's it. That's all it takes. And they can teach you how to pronounce their name. And maybe you, you learn how to, you know, you learn something new. You learn how to yes. some letters together. <laughs> yeah. And when the, and, and not just that the buy-in is important, right? That, oh, getting this person on your team, but seriously, the genuine buy-in from your teammate, right? The camaraderie that that builds on the, the staff, I, I feel like it changes things from day to night when this person knows that you're going to have consideration for them. You're going to listen to what they're saying. You want to make sure that they're comfortable and that everybody else is, you know, has what they need to take care of this person. So I love that question. Kim, I have a question for you and she may have frozen again. So we're going to give her just a second. See if she's with us. I wanted to know Shannon, when she comes back on, I want for our listeners, um, if she makes it back, that uh, we to describe what a career coach is. And because I don't know, um, here she comes. So, Kim, I was just saying to Shannon when you made it back that I want you to describe for our listeners um, what a career coach is. Because we have listeners from teenagers all the way into their 80s. And some people may not know, or they may have been out of the workforce for a while, or maybe they haven't entered the workforce yet. What does a career coach do? And how do you help folks? Yeah, so a career coach can help you every step of your career journey, anywhere from um, understanding who you are and the work that you want to do or the impact or that you want to make, um, the purpose that you have, or to working on your resume, your cover letter, LinkedIn profile uh, updates, networking, um, being able to negotiate salary or even working on um, an exit plan to another job, making career pivots. Honestly, anywhere along that journey, um, a career coach can really help you, especially during um, the early stages of your career development, like for students. I love that, Cam. I love the work you do. And I love the work with the students coming out because, you know, it's a big deal nowadays. Like, I am definitely older than both of y'all. And it I, it just didn't feel as big of a deal, I think, when we were first coming out. Of course, I was kind of in a small town. And so, like, you still did things, like, went in person to turn in your resume and had an in-person conversation. Whereas now, you know, you have to get through all the social media gates and all the technology gates in order to even get invited to that call, to then the conversation, to then. So, I think, I mean... Of course, you know, I, I'm i a huge fan of coaches anyways, and that we don't have to do this by ourselves, right. that we can have the help and the support we need along the way. And yeah, thank you for doing that. Yeah. And it's interesting that you say that too, Christine. What comes up for me is the way it used to be organized. You know, there used to be pension plans and things where the company that you were working for for decades took care of your retirement. They realized not sustainable. I'm not going to continue as a company to pay for everybody Mm -hmm. that's ever been on the, on the list, you know, for their retirement. That's a lot. It's like the presidencies, you know? And so they decided to change the model. And so it is different. And um, 
I was at TEDx and it reminded me when one of the speakers were speaking about having young coaches and talking to millennials Mm -hmm. and the benefit of knowing that, um, knowing that people at every step of the way can help you, right? Because as things change before, even if you're a big company after COVID and nobody's in this huge building anymore, all the standard operating procedures are going online and now the setup of the business is different, you know, knowing who to talk to at that point is really important. So Cam, I love that you help people through all of it because even if it's their name or just knowing how to show up authentically at work, knowing how their passions tie into what they want to do and who to network with. Hey, go on, be on, go be on this nonprofit board because this is your business Mm -hmm. to be really intentional about that. I think is great. Yeah. And I feel like, especially nowadays with Gen Z, um, you know, they no longer feel the same way that, um, that boomers or millennials feel, um, you know, I think that our idea of a balanced work and life has really shifted from generation to generation. And um, Gen Z definitely is very wild free and just, you know, they don't feel the need to commit to an employer for 10 plus, 30 plus years. They don't feel the need to sign up for a pension. Um, And so I think that the way that work has shifted has really changed from, um, you know, what we all experience as millennials or to, to, Gen Z. And so I think it is really important for young coaches like myself to be in this, in this game, because, you know, we understand this generation. Um, we're much more connected to this generation. Um, I didn't grow up with a cell phone or internet, but at least I had internet for the majority of my life and understand right. the role of social media or, you know, a digital branding. Um, mm-hmm. And so there are a lot of um, ways that I've connected with, the early talent demographics. Um, but off, uh, I have these conversations with folks who are 50, who are 40, and, and there's a lot of similarities between what we all feel. Um, a lot of the times, you know, there's the students that I work with, they are really stressed on what career to pick for the rest of their lives, or they don't know what career to choose. And there's so much pressure on choosing the perfect career. And it's so funny because I would talk to people who are like 45, 50, and they still have the same question. Yes. (laughs) Yes. And I found the same thing. We've been talking about the book in the books, you know, in the working with the authors for women connected in wisdom and connected in wisdom press, whether they're in their thirties, because before um, Cam Lam, I was the youngest one, right? So I was in my twenties. I had the question uh, again, authors to their eighties and everybody's like, how do I fit? Does my story fit into wellness? Should I be in the book? And we're like, of course you should be included. Yes, you fit into wellness. Mm-hmm. Yes, you should share your story. And um, it is interesting how we, would think before those conversations that it would be different, that it might be different. Um, I feel like when I was raised, I was taught that adults always knew what they, what they wanted, what was going on, you know, (laughs) so to get there and to still have the same questions and some of the same anxieties and the same hesitations is interesting. They were totally faking it. They were, and I knew it. I said, no, (laughs) mm -mm." little Shannon was like, no, that's not making sense. You can't just tell me this because I'm a little kid. I'm not stupid though. Right. You You probably called them on it, didn't you? I can tell you. you Like, well, what, here's what, here's what my vision is. Not necessarily calling them, but just asking like 20 follow-up, very intense follow-up questions to really get to the root core. I have an example. I have an example. And this is like Shannon. This is like teenage Shannon. This is not about names, but uh, we had just moved to this house. And when we talk about transitions, Camlin, I went through a lot of transitions growing up too, right? So new house and my dad was working on me doing the dishes. And uh, he's like, Shannon, these dishes have been here for weeks. I said, dad, we haven't lived here for weeks. You know, you can act like roaches are going to come. It's fine. They're not going to come. The house is clean. The dishes are dirty. I'll clean the dishes. Okay. No problem. Um, But yeah, I did push back, Christine. I guess I've always (laughs) been like that. (laughs) Mm -mm. You're not just going to make me think something. Yeah. I love it. And I think that's the most beautiful thing is that, you know, we're all still trying to figure it out no matter what stage we're at. And that's 
why it's so important for us to talk to our younger generations, younger kids, any nibblings that you have <laughs> um, about, about career. And I think that it's never too soon to talk about this because kids need to be introduced to all the different types of careers that exist out there, you know, as, as an, as a Vietnamese um, immigrant and Asian American, yes. I come from a culture that where my parents, my mom only wanted me to be a doctor or a lawyer, um, you know, engineer or any of the, those things. And it's very common for the API community um, to <laughs> grow up feeling like this is all the parents that the parents wanted them to do. And so I believe it's so important that we spread awareness on the different type of careers, not just so that they can grow up having limitless um, ideas on what they could do, but also so that when they become adults, they don't, you know, feel like, oh, I didn't know I could do that. Or, oh, right. I didn't realize that job existed. I would have started sooner. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. And so I think that it's all so important for us to start having these conversations with with younger, um, younger kids. And, and it doesn't have to be anything like, Ooh, um, you know, what specific company do you want to work for? You know, the kids right. might not, may not know. Um, but you know, maybe questions, easy questions for our kiddos. Like, what do you feel like gives you energy? You know, maybe they're like, Oh, I like playing with stuff. My nephews like playing with Legos and so likes building stuff on Minecraft. And so, okay, you like building stuff. You like, you know, putting things together and see what comes around, you know, and then just anything as simple as that, I think will do so, um, such amazing things for, um, for their, your next generation of leaders and CEOs and change makers. Um, yeah, just having these small conversations. Absolutely. And when I think about goal getters, right, goal diggers, and us being intentional about the next step is mm -hmm. stepping together, whether you're 42, entering a new career, you know, or 18, yeah. coming out of high school, and you're going straight into the career field. I think that a lot of the considerations are similar, like we said. And so I think that with your intentionality on being authentic, that those are the right type of conversations, you know, Cam, before we move to wisdom in action, I want to know, how do people find you and work with you? Like if they're listening to this episode and they're like, yes, I need a mm -hmm. career coach mm -hmm. and I need help with my resume or I have no idea what I want to do next. And um, how do they get in touch with you? How does that work? Yeah, so I am currently in the process of building out uh, a business called the Career Cam. And it's still in its baby stages, but I would appreciate any love that I can get. Yes. Um, and so I yeah, can be reached out on, um, on LinkedIn at uh, cam-fam, or you can search me up, cam-fam. Um, I am revamping up my website, but once I finish, uh, you can find me on thecareercam.com uh, or thecareercam at, um, on Instagram beautiful. And we will put all those links in our show notes so folks can click over to you and find you. Absolutely. I appreciate that. I appreciate yes. that. Of course. So every week we do a wisdom in action, which is taking the knowledge that you know, right, and putting it into action based on the dimension we're talking about. So for social wellness, what are you doing for yourself this week? Yeah. So for social wellness, I am... Um, taking a girlfriend out for wedding venue shopping. Oh. And I am um, surprising a friend with my partner for his birthday. Oh. So those are our social wellnesses. We're going to spend time with friends this weekend. Um, and you know, going back to my original labeler of a gold digger, uh, yes. one of my goals this weekend is to really finish my website. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've been... Uh, yeah, I've been I've been really um, just trying to make it user intuitive and inviting and just trying to think about my brands. But hopefully I'm going to be able to you know, put everything in my mind and be able to execute that. So hashtag gold digger energy right there. Ooh, right. Like so, Cam, <laughs> if you're open to a little feedback, um, 
Shannon and I, we have mm -hmm. our workflow and every week it says there's a little button that says website update because it, it always needs to be updated. Yeah. So don't you worry about it being perfect. You're going right. to be working on it from here on out. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I know. One of the my favorite quotes is it doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be done. Yes. Yep. <laughs> it really helped me. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And we have a tendency as women often to want it to be perfect or so nobody can say anything about it. And I, I don't think it's just women, but I think women especially because we tend to be under so much scrutiny. Mm -hmm. Scrutiny? I said that word completely wrong. <laughs> and um, so I just think about that. And that's what I work with my clients, too, is, you know, good enough. It's mm -hmm. so, like get it done. And we can mm -hmm. always improve on it. We can always go for it. Um, but if it doesn't get out there nobody sees it. And, yeah. um, and it is, you know, I should knock on wood, but you know, we've never had anybody come and say, Oh, your website's horrible. You know, right. <laughs> I'd be open to and it. After this come, episode. come on the team and help us out. Yeah. <laughs> That's what Shannon would do. <laughs> Build it, baby. Yes. Exactly. Shannon, what's your <laughs> wisdom in action this week? Oh, for social wellness, we are working on, we're working on getting this stuff out. So I think my wisdom is in action is share more stories. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It's been one of my favorite things to do through the press and the book is just getting these stories out to the people who they'll help. Mm -hmm. I love that. Thank you. I now I'm going to have a hard time coming behind that one. That was Comparison good. is a thief of joy. No comparison. I know it, right? Um, let's see. What is my wisdom in action this week? Um, I think mine really, I'm going to go old school and go simple and just connect. Okay. Like I have some folks that I need to connect with and, um, it's just going to be hashtag connect. Beautiful. And, um, yeah, cause I'm going and doing some caregiving. I'm going out to a four-year-old birthday party, which y'all yes. let me tell y'all, <sighs> let me tell y'all they're turning four. So my sister is throwing a golf party <laughs> called Party because they're four. Funny. There's going to be so many puns at this party. I love um, puns. But I am building the, we're doing a putt putt golf course and I am building the hole that's themed around dinosaurs. Okay. So I am, I can't wait to share pictures. I am mm. ridiculously excited about how cool this, that's this cool. putt putt course is going to be so each one has a different theme mm -hmm. oh i mm -hmm. like that okay. right and if i i think if i've got it right there's there's dinosaurs there's construction mm. there's there's names and mm. there's volcanoes because okay. those are kind of the things they're into right now so they're gonna they're go crazy twins, Cam. <laughs> they're, they're twins and um they are just they're awesome and yeah, that's fun. pretty impressive i feel like you should take some pictures and <laughs> maybe somebody's going to want for you to, you know, replicate the same work. Right? Well, my sister, this is my sister and her, her vision and her dream. And, um, you know, I'm going in for moral support and I'm, I'm Tia, I'm their aunt. So I get to come in and give them everything they want. And, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's my role in this situation. So I get to connect. That's the other part of my social wellness this week, y'all is, you know, I get to be Tia. So mm. that's, that's the fun part of this job and those family know. connections. So yeah, I'm we're super excited. Of, you get... Yeah. Go ahead. I was, just, I was just trying to say, we're doing a lot of celebration this weekend. All of us. Yeah. Right? You know, we're celebrating stories. We're celebrating people, mm -hmm. birthdays, weddings. I yes. love that. Right. Yes. It really is a good time. And I just want to give a shout out too to all our kids who have gone back to school because mm -hmm. here in Georgia, it's school started, y'all. Like I'm, I looked up and I'm yeah. like, what is happening? Like there really? are buses, there are kids, there are, whoa, what is yeah. happening here? <laughs> um, so, so glad um, I'm graduated. Yes. Right. But thank yeah. you. I was thinking about the teachers earlier. Oh. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for the teachers and everybody who's putting in work. Definitely covering this this school year. 
And our teachers who it's the second day and you've decided that you're done, reach out to Cam. Um, she's a great career coach. And right. get you hooked up with another, Hello, <laughs> another man. vision, another line. Right? Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> Cam, thank you so much for this conversation. Thank you yes. for your work in the world and sharing your story with us. Mm-hmm. And we are delighted to be connected. Yes. The honor is mine. Oh my gosh. I love being able to share my story and being able to just open up about, you know, my upbringing and place uh, my identity in the workplace. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. And if, if one person listening Mm -hmm. to this podcast can at least feel inspired to be themselves and to Mm -hmm. bring their authentic place to work or in their own personal lives and, I think we all, yeah, succeeded and, and did a great job and can call it, call it a day. Right. So, yes. <laughs> to oh, see plant the seed. Mm-hmm. Exactly. We just need to plant the seed. I'm not out here trying to have people change their names. You know, that's not the point. It might I, happen though. <laughs> send her a letter. If you change your name okay. because of Cam Lynn, send her a letter. <laughs> yeah, I would love to hear. Yes, please uh, reach out to me. Let me know right. if you ended up transitioning, but I'm not here to change, have people change their names. Right. Um, I'm just here to have people reflect and yeah. think mm-hmm. about how they can be more themselves and be better um, and, and, you know, keep your name or don't. <laughs> We're right. all here uh, for each other. So thank you so mm-hmm. much, Christina and Shannon, for letting You're me welcome. be part of your podcast. Absolutely. Talk to you soon. So, so fun. Good. Yes. Right? So good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Social well. And there's just so much to think about, right? There's yes. so much to think about. I loved her story. Love the work she's doing in the world. We may have to have her back because, like, I kind of wanted so. to know, like, how did she get into being a career coach? I think we have her in the community, but we'll talk about it later. Right? I think, have her come know, teach some stuff. Exactly. Yep. Fun? Stay plugged oh in. Oh my gosh. Yep. Absolutely. That's what I thought. We'll talk about it later. But All right. I love so it. anything we need to lift up before we close out um, episode 124? Anything Is there anything coming up about. soon that folks need to know about? No, I would just, if you're keyed in to what we're doing, you know, make sure that you follow us on social media, like, and subscribe mm-hmm. to the podcast so you get the latest updates. Again, we've been talking about it a little bit on this episode, but we're about to publish this audio book. And I know that this year has been crazy. We're talking about all the things that have happened, right? So if you hadn't got to the book, we still love you. It's okay. <laughs> Listen to the audio book. Listen to it while you're doing all the other stuff. And you want to hear these stories and we have more coming out for you. So stay right. tuned. Yeah. And you want to be connected, right? Yeah. Connected to our expert guests on the podcast, connected mm-hmm. to our authors. Um, y'all, there is some amazing, incredible good work going on in this world. And when things get tough, I always look for the beauty and the helpers. Yeah. And I'm so delighted um, to be connected. And thank you, Shannon, for another great week. Yes. I'm grateful to be in partnership with you. And yes, same um, to you. Yeah. Yes. Okay, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining us for season 14 social wellness. We will be back live at five. In the meantime, don't forget, be well, be wise, and be whole. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening. This has been the Women Connected in Wisdom podcast. On air live on Wednesdays at 5 p.m. Eastern via Facebook and YouTube. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Be part of the conversation and get connected at womenconnectedinwisdom.com.